Well, it's finally arrived. The playoffs, the six-week run toward a state championship and all of the major classifications from 6A all the way down to Class A. That's six-man now in this new age of teams moving up to being 6A schools from 5A and 4A to 5A and 3A to 4A, and you get the picture. Just one word about things before we move on to talk a little bit about the playoffs. There's been a lot of talk, uh, a lot of speculation controversy, if you will, certainly a great deal of discussion surrounding a couple of tie-breaking situations. One in the greater Austin area where Pflugerville, McNeil, and Stony Point all had their three head coaches walk out to midfield at Dragon Stadium in Round Rock and toss a coin on Friday night to see who would get into the playoffs. As it turned out, Pflugerville went in. There were playoff coin flips in other parts of the state. In fact, there was one in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex conducted at a Whataburger. In addition to that, there was a great deal of controversy surrounding 27-5A. In 27-5A, you had Lockhart, San Marcos, and Alamo Heights. Two schools would go to the playoffs. One would be left out as the final playoff spot. So those three schools were fighting for it, and it came down late in the game to Lockhart having to surrender a touchdown to make sure the point differential got them into the postseason. Now, Lockhart Lions head coach Brian Herman took a lot of heat about this, saying he's uh, compromised the game, and even some said it went as far as to be cheating. Let me tell you something. First of all, it wasn't cheating. Everything was done within the rules of the tie break. And then on the other hand, as Coach Herman said, he couldn't look his players in the eye afterwards and say, I had an opportunity for us to be able to get into the playoffs, and I chose to look the other way just to try to drive 80 yards to get one last touchdown that would have been meaningless. They needed two touchdowns to win in the last two minutes of the game. Not likely to happen, by the way, with the Lions' slot T attack. So he chose the path of least resistance. They had already won a head-to-head matchup with Alamo Heights anyway. So step back into the end zone, give the ball up for one final touchdown. It padded the final margin for San Marcos, and it allowed the Rattlers to get into the playoffs, but it also ensured the fact that Lockhart could move in on a tiebreaker. But enough about all that stuff. All the tie-breaking stuff is out of the way, and now it's time to move on to the playoffs. What about big matchups? Most of the time, in fact, nearly all of the time, the bi-district matchups are rather lopsided matchups. You've got district champions against teams that might be struggling a little bit, and quite often the recipe for a blowout is at hand. And that's largely the case with 2015. But there are a couple of exceptions. One of those, of course, in Class 6A, not only is it a big-time matchup, you have hallmark programs. South Lake Carroll and two-time defending state champion Cedar Hill will meet. The reason this came about is because Cedar Hill was surprised in a district matchup with Mansfield, and that dropped the two-time defending state champion Longhorns to the runner-up spot where they have to go into South Lake to take on the Carroll Dragons at Dragon Stadium. That's another new UIL rule this year where you'll see – teams in the first round have the option, the higher seeds, of playing at home. That should be a great matchup, and it'll probably go right down to the wire. There's another good matchup out in East Texas. Longview and Lufkin, they already played once in the regular season. In fact, there's a lot of games this first week of the playoffs that are rematches of games played early in the season. There were non-district matchups. Vista Ridge and LBJ is one of those taking place in the greater Austin area. In fact, those two schools are meeting for the fourth time in the past two years. Most of the time, The by-district round sets up mismatches, and that's the case again. But there are those two good matchups on which to keep an eye. Then get ready for next week, because next week you could have, in all of the major classifications, head-to-head matchups between teams that are ranked in the top ten. It could be a great matchup in round two. But first, we have round one. 